Now, as the deadline closes in for the government's healthy homes standards, families living in state homes say more than extra insulation is needed to keep their children warm and healthy. As of Monday, ceiling and underfloor insulation will be compulsory in all rental homes with further standards around ventilation and heating to come into effect in July 2021. But that timeline doesn't apply to Housing New Zealand, the country's biggest landlord, which has an extra two years to bring homes up to scratch. Now, housing advocates say that's not good enough and the government needs to lead by example by making its home, its homes warm and dry ahead of private rentals, not years after. Our cameraman Nick Monroe and reporter Nita Blakeperson filed this report. The sun's just rising in the South Auckland suburb of Clendon and the temperature here is hovering around a cool four degrees. The birds are up but it's a slow start to the day for many as the bitter cold permeates homes and bones. In this two-bedroom housing New Zealand home, mattresses are being packed away from the lounge where people have been sleeping. Six children and their parents live here. Mum Sarah says the extra bodies bring no warmth to the freezing cold and cramped conditions. It's like if you're talking, you're talking like right now, <laughs> um, as if you're blowing out a smoke. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just like waking up outside. As the kids pour cereal for breakfast, streams of water pour down the kitchen windows. They've been cracked open to provide some ventilation and the freezing winter air is flowing in. A thermometer shows the temperature in the bedroom is 9 degrees. It's slightly warmer in the lounge at 10 degrees. Would that be how warm it usually feels? Or do you reckon it gets even colder in here? No, it gets even colder. This is nothing. Sarah, which is not her real name, has been living in this home with her family for the past five years. Mouldy curtains have had to be pulled down and the bedding is now wrapped in plastic to protect it from rotting. I had blankets in here and this is why I wrapped them with this. I ended up chucking them in the rubbish because they were all moulded up. The walls drip. There are cracks in them. It really depends on how heavy the rain is. Yeah. Yeah. The water comes right through the yeah, ceiling. it comes through right through the ceiling. Um, I'll have to get a bucket to just leave it there for whenever the rain stops. Some parts so fragile it only takes one of her toddlers to lean on the wall to make it crumble. I think it's rotting, you know, it's dented. The only source of heat is a small A3 sized wall heater provided by Housing New Zealand which hangs flimsily and is never used because Sarah says it's completely ineffective and expensive to run. The freezing conditions are taking their toll. My kids constantly moan because they, they do get sick quite frequently because of what they're breathing in and out. Uh, the mould is just, it's like extra, you know. When one kid gets sick, the rest get sick. Under the government's new Healthy Homes regulations, all rental properties must have heaters that can heat a living room to 18 degrees, ventilation fans in kitchens and bathrooms, and ceiling and underfloor insulation. The insulation requirement comes into effect on Monday, with the rest due by July 2021. But that deadline doesn't apply to Housing New Zealand homes, which have an extension until 2023. If we want to change these homes, why not move the more vulnerable to the head of the queue? Uh, that's going to have significant benefits for large numbers of, of people, more vulnerable people and often in overcrowded situations, so additional benefits. Andrew Eagles is the head of the New Zealand Green Building Council. He says Housing New Zealand, the country's largest landlord, needs to move quicker. If we really want to look at a vision for healthy, warm, dry homes for New Zealanders, that one way to, to meet that and to really hit that target and be powerful is to, is to lead. So uh, I think it could be significantly better. Housing New Zealand says Sarah's home has been through its warm and dry programme and with carpeted bedrooms and living room, limited thermal curtains, range hood and extractor fans, as well as ceiling and floor insulation, it meets current standards. But Ricardo Menendez of Auckland Action Against Poverty says if that's what a compliant home looks like, it's not acceptable. This is your standard housing New Zealand home where despite having a degree of insulation, by design the home becomes damp, cold 
and unfortunately a source of health conditions for the families who live there. The reality is, is that throughout the country our homes are just not up to standard and insulation itself alone won't cut it. Um, we need the government to act with urgency to start making homes warmer, putting heat pumps and also just addressing the new homes that are being built to ensure they're not like this in the future. Sarah and her family have had enough. She's requested a transfer to keep her children warm and safe, but has been waiting more than 10 months for the move. I honestly think that they don't care. Yeah. Because if they cared enough, they would have came and, you know, fixed up the house. But um, they keep dragging it, you know. It's around 9am when the first rays of sun arrive in Sarah's home. It's the only heating the house will get all day. Sarah says she's sick of being cold and cramped, but she isn't expecting things to change anytime soon. I have to put up with it, only because I have no other choice.